So my second ceremony after I completed the um, Palos Fuertes Dieta, uh, I already mentioned that in the first one, we made like a machine in a building in a higher dimension in the Maloka out of all organic material that I refer to as like a God machine or a temple of God. In this next ceremony, what happened was uh, it was about four days I was on my, basically my fourth day out of town. Indeed, it's like you come in and out of town, but into the healing center and eat less restrictive foods. So I was finally eating a couple of eggs. I was eating like vegetable soup, some fruit. What it didn't was consequently give me a lot of gas. I had really bad um, like diarrhea for like three days. And what happened was I went into ceremony and I had, you know, diarrhea from the beginning of the ceremony. It was pretty nuts. Like, during the whole ceremony, I kept entering and exiting, like, this, leaving the ceremony, leaving the maloka to handle this really bad diarrhea I had. So over the course of, you know, maybe the ceremony might last. It goes from about 8 to 1, it's about 5 hours. During that whole time, I probably went to the bathroom, like, 20 times to basically, you know, shit water okay so as I'm going to the bathroom the bathroom is up on a hill from the Maloka and as I'm walking on the hill I'm walking on these like um, rocks and like these little you know cut pieces of wood like wood tiles and on top of these I see these like superimposed images on top of the little pieces of wood and these Rocks like this ghosting effect that's just stacked really high, and I go, "Oh, maybe my vision's just messing with me." I was like, "Go to the bathroom, you know, sit on the toilet, have this really bad bout of diarrhea." And I sit up, and as I or I don't sit up, I stand up, and as I stand up after I'm done, you know, and take care of my business, I just had this thought. I go, "Should I vomit or shouldn't I vomit?" I just, I'll just vomit. You just turn and I just start vomiting as hard as humanly possible. It's just ex explosive, violent. Later on, some people in the, like the next day or whatever, the healing center were making mention that it was so loud, it like reverberated, it like shook them, where they could feel my vomit, the noise of me vomiting through them. When I'm finally done, um, Ayahuasca says to me, what I'm about to show you, you can't be human to see. I was like, okay. And I'm sitting on the wooden steps to the toilets right, you know, by the, um, outside the bathrooms, uphill from Loka. All the plants in that vicinity say to me telepathically, we are all seeking the probability of one and I was like that's the most fucked up thing I've ever heard a plant say we're seeking the probability of one I look um, at the plants around them and they all have that ghosting effect they're like overlapping overlapping I go well oh, there's more of that fucked up vision it's just weird looking so i um one of the shamans comes to me in the bathroom and he just says to me are you okay and i'm like yeah and i go let's just go back in ceremony so i walk back in ceremony and one of the other shamans is singing and i sit down again and i'm looking up and as i'm looking up Inside the maloka is this energetic pattern. It's like a network or a weave or like a webbing of light and energy. And in that webbing, it's um, kind of like ghosting. It's got that overlapping pattern. What I was witnessing inside the maloka was um, a multiverse that what we don't see through our normal modes of perception um, is that we are occupying 
a multiverse. And as he's singing, as he sings on the downbeat, it kind of snaps into place and these overlaps collapse into a singular expression. And as I witness those that collapse into like a singular expression, I realized what my what those plants meant when it said we're seeking a probability of one. That we can't perceive the number of one's perception, but what we are experiencing and what we are living within is a multiverse that there are an series of parallel universes we're occupying within and what the shaman was doing before even he kind of works on you to sing to you to fix your DNA with an egg rose was he was collapsing the multiverse into a single coherent universe before he even begins this kind of what are we going to call it? Psychic search. And I said, you know what? Um, I think I'm going to try that myself. And I didn't sing to collapse it. I just went like, you know, I concentrated. And with my will again, just like how my will created that God machine and that temple of God, I just concentrated. And from my concentration, the multiple expressions collapsed into a single expression. I realized that that's what holding space means. Holding space is about collapsing the space into a coherent space to begin this form of like psychic surgery with your DNA when they begin singing to your DNA. The shaman in those moments is singing to collapse those multiple dimension expressions. And then when you collapse, everything ultimately leads back to understanding connection to unity, understanding connection to source. Like, why would I imagine a plant saying, I'm, we're seek, like a set of plants say that they're seeking a probability of one? Like the word probability of one is just kind of a bizarre way to phrase seeking unity so probability one means that like everything is trying to collapse from multiple expressions to an expression of unity that it is achieving unity through the multiplicity so what i ended up doing at the end was assisting in collapsing the space from a multiverse to a single coherent universe to assist in a psychic surgery where the next day I asked the shamans, I asked the head shaman, his brother, and the head shaman's wife, if that was what was going on in ceremony, that in the Maloka during the ceremony, there's the, like multiple dimensions. And through concentration in Ikoro, you can turn all those multiple dimensions into a single dimension. And they were like, yes, we all did that last night at the same time. It's fucked up to realize that like these two things, these are my first two ceremonies coming out of Palos Huertas and it was just totally unexpected. It's a total flip of expectations, but in some ways it exceeds my expectations and it took me on a totally different path. Anything that I was expecting, I, it's, I just, at the end, after this ceremony, I realized I had to let go of expectations. I had a kind of definition of what I was thinking to ex receive from this dieta in terms of knowledge or whatnot.